Welcome along everybody to this the under 19 C boys league final between Clash the Pubble Bantry August O'Carlin College from Nobber. I'm joining uh, I'm Connor Meany and I'm joining uh, commentary here by Danny O'Mahony. Welcome along Danny. Uh, good to be here Connor. Good to be here. So we're going to see how the two teams set up here early doors but that's a big score inside from Clash the Pubble Bantry and they get an early basket to settle any nerves that they might have. That was John Emerson who had scored that first two. So Danny, what sort of stuff are you going to be looking out for in the opening couple of minutes here as both teams kind of settle into the game? Like obviously this is the fourth game of today that we've been looking at and um, early on in the games, it, it took a while to get going. I think both teams uh, you know, came out in every game zone defence forcing teams to shoot from the outside because I mentioned in the earlier games with Jason um, a lot of these teams would play their school games in a school gym so they wouldn't be too familiar with this big open court that we have here in the arena today yeah definitely it's uh, the baskets are a little bit different but you wouldn't know this from uh, <laughs> looking at uh, John Anderson who's come out and hit two baskets straight away that's a big three pointer from the outside yeah and as I said look, both teams obviously in his own defence for Snick but obviously the Bantry lads came ready to play today, ready to knock down the shots. Good patience there, they moved the ball inside, but it's no good, and Anderson again with the rebound here, he's been everywhere early on, but the ball's stolen. I know Carolyn College are pushing the ball back up. And I think one thing there just with this game, um, obviously O'Carlin College will be a big GA college, big Gaelic football college, obviously above a mean, and obviously Bantry and West Cork as well. So I reckon, just like the Ratmore team, a lot of these lads out there would be both dual players, as in yeah. playing basketball in school, playing basketball in club, and also then during the summertime, obviously putting on the football boots and kicking a few points. Yeah, yeah definitely. You can see there's a few athletes out there, and it's definitely been something that's been very prevalent in the last few years, a lot of people crossing over between basketball and uh, Gaelic football. I think everyone wants to be the next Karen Don. He is that it? I certainly do. But I don't see Dublin calling for me, unfortunately. But even a lot of the, the tactics have uh, been kind of shared between the two sports in, in recent years. Uh, Danny, a lot of the spacing kind of things that have, have probably been in basketball for a long time are now moving across into, into Gaelic football. You have the likes of Mark Ingle, who's the DCU Mercy coach, who is working with the Dublin Gaelic footballers. You have James Weldon, who's a basketball coach down in Kerry, who's now working with the Kerry footballers. And I think obviously Donegal implemented that obviously a couple of years ago when they won the All Ireland and they brought in this kind of I suppose zonal mark and people thought that's oh, impossible to break down. But then when they came across and they looked at basketball, something that we'd be very fami familiar with breaking down zones. Yeah, definitely. I think that's where they got the introduction of the basketball coaches to come in and do some work as in breaking down the zone. The f one of two free throws there were good for Kevin Clifford. The scoreboard hasn't updated yet. So it's five points to zero, not six. As we, oh no, it is six. We were correct. We're a little bit ahead of the scorekeepers here in the arena. I think the live stream is actually ahead of live basketball <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> so Carolyn College here, training by six points early on. They just need to probably get a, a basket here to kind of settle down their nerves. Probably haven't been in the in the basketball arena very many times. But a nice block there, inside by Liam Cotter, and three are have pushed the ball down again. They're being slightly more aggressive against his own defense, trying to probe it a little bit more with the dribble here. Again, nice move inside. And a lovely basket there by John Anderson, who takes his personal total up to, I think it's six now that he has. So yeah, correct, he's on six points. So after uh, the first three minutes, John Anderson really seems to be the go-to offensive player for Bantry. Yeah, he's playing with a lot of confidence and, and really that's one of the things when you come to this National Basketball Arena you really have to just play with confidence it can be a difficult thing especially if you're not used to playing in front of people from your school who are supporting you this is probably a bigger crowd than most of the lads have played basketball in front of so a ni another nice move inside but he gets blocked and we have an early timeout here as Clash the Pubble Bantry lead 8-0 we'll be back in one minute
Welcome back after the timeout. So, Kloshta Pobovantri have the inbounds ball here into John Enderlin. He gets it back inside, goes up and draws the foul. So he's going to head to the free throw line for two shots. See if he can extend out the lead. They currently lead eight points to zero here with 4.43 to go in the first quarter. O'Carroll College just need to settle down a little bit. Just see the ball go through the basket and kind of build themselves into this game a little bit more. First one's good for Anderson. I think after the first three minutes there, we've a contender for the MVP already. You know, he's really putting his mark on this final, young John Anderson. Yeah, he is. He's looked very good. A mix of both from the outside and driving aggressively to the basket. So impressive so far. Nice ball fake into a three-pointer. No good, but an offensive rebound is there. No good. A good battle inside. Great work there by Liam Cotter on the uh, looking for the offensive rebounds, getting second chances, and now Bantry have another inbound play into Anderson. He shoots a fadeaway, tough shot, no good. A good rebound there by Saren of It's obviously interesting you mentioned obviously about Cotter getting the offensive rebound. What I've noticed in the other games today, and obviously early on in this game, is it seems to be the team obviously that get more offensive rebounds, create more scoring opportunities, are having a lot more success. Like definitely. It, it, the, the arena is often talked about as a, a difficult place to shoot the ball, so you've got to give yourself as many opportunities as possible. If, if those percentages aren't that high, the more the more shots you're able to get up, obviously the greater chances you're going to have uh, to, to get some scores. Obviously, Anderson there and Connor in particular, two big boys at the back of their zone. They're obviously crashing the offensive rebounds too. You know that's going to be a dividend for um, for Bantry in this game if they continue to do that. Unfortunately, Saren of going steps on the baseline there, so Bantry are getting the ball back. And we have another timeout here. This time it's for Clash of Pueblo Bantry, so we'll be back in a moment. Welcome back after the timeout. So we'll see if there's any adjustments here from either team as they come out of the timeout. Carlin, long range shot there, no good. But again, again, Anderson with the rebound, no good. Another second chance opportunity. Spread back out to Kevin Clifford who moves the ball. Goes back around, good patient offense. Another opportunity again, and this time it's good by Sean Brady. but. Unfortunately for Nobber, they're just not going to be able to give their opponent, a clash to pull with that many opportunities, Danny, if th otherwise they're going to be made pay for it. Oh, correct, Connor. And I think one thing as well is, obviously, as yourself from playing, when you're playing the zone defense, as much as it's good to protect the key and all that kind of stuff, but the principle of you're not marking anybody man to man. So when a shot comes up, it's really hard to find an offensive player, then to box out. So I think what Bantry doing is they're capitalizing on, obviously, seven, um, sorry, Cotter and Anderson. They're finding those gaps and they're going getting the offensive rebounds create more shot opportunities and look if you give a team like this Bantry team three or four opportunities every offense they will keep scoring you know yeah definitely that was a good rebound there by Sean Brady on the defensive glass but it's going to be O'Carroll and College ball from the end line they're going to look to try and get the ball possibly back again into Saren of Winnegan. good ball movement there the outside shot for three and it's good 
Excellent work there by Killian Markey as he hits the long range shot to get the first score of the game for O'Carroll College. That's going to be huge for them to settle down. And just on that score there, the O'Carroll College crowd and the school really came into it. So. And there we go again. So after not scoring for the first opening couple of minutes of the game, all of a sudden it's back to back baskets and it's only a six point game. That's huge for O'Carroll College. I think those baskets as well really woke up the fans. Obviously, you can hear um, O'Carroll College fans. They're definitely the lower of the two. So if they can get behind their team, obviously, that's worth another few points down the stretch. Definitely. Long range shot by Anderson, no good. A steal, though, by Kloster Pubble Bantry. They have a bit more patience now here on the offense, but. Long range shot by Clifford. Off the backboard, no good, and a chance for. O'Carroll College to push it in transition. It looks like he was fouled. Yes, he was. A blocking foul called by the referee. It looks like uh, Saran of Fiona going landed awkwardly on his wrist. He's holding his arm there on the ground. Hopefully this isn't too serious and that he's okay. We'll see now. There is um, first aid support here, so we'll see if he requires it or not. He looks like he's going to get himself back up off the ground. He looks like a tough guy, uh, Danny. Is it? He's well used to a bump or two. Yeah, I, th I think as well. Can obviously look. You know, these lads obviously it's the league final in schools. Some of these lads could be six years or anything. They've been waiting a couple of weeks to play this due to the storm. I don't think this lad wants to go off and miss his schools cup final or schools league final. Definitely. Even though he's on his feet, no, he's still holding his elbow. But I think he's going to shake it off. He's might up, he's it might just be a footy bone. bone. Yeah, and he's looking up at the scoreboard, kind of probably <laughs> edging himself on, like, I can do this. Yeah, definitely. A turnover there, though, and Bantry pushed the ball back down. A lot of contact there, no call. And if there was any doubt before, you see him again there, Sarno Fiona going right there in the mix of everything, so he's definitely not going to shy away from any contact, despite the fact that he might have taken a bump there. So this is a big offense here. They're moving the ball around much better here. A better ball movement against that zone defense. Good yeah. patience. You can see the Bantry team are definitely made work on the zone defense there. The one thing about it is they, they were ch just going from side to side. They need to get in a little bit more to make that zone kind of collapse a little bit, Danny, just to make them work a little bit harder. Yeah, because I think obviously what Bantry want is Bantry want them shooting that shot from the outside. So if uh, O'Carroll and I just want to pass, pass the ball around the perimeter, Bantry will be happy enough with that. A good drive there on the baseline, but unfortunately stepped on the baseline, so it's a turnover. We've got 1 minute 22 seconds to go here in this first quarter. It's an 11 points to 5 lead for Klaus de Povo. Bantry, ball goes inside again to Saron. It's no good, and a turnover. A nice steal there by Clifford. He pushed the ball in transition and draws a foul. Excellent work there by Kevin Clifford, who's looked bright in, in this uh, first quarter as well. Yeah, that he has. He's definitely one of the players on the Bantry team who's always looking to push the ball. Um, and as you know, Conor, obviously, you know, the easiest way to score the basketball is obviously through a fast break, definitely. scoring before the defense gets back. And I think that's what Clifford's trying to do for his team. Good work there, but no good. And ball's pushed back down. For O'Carrollin College, Saron from the outside, but just no good. I think he he'll blame that on his elbow there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's a big guy though, and it'll be good to to try and get him in and around the basket, try and, and make that defense have to pay attention to him underneath the basket if, if at all possible. Yeah, on his own, for his own team, he's playing the middle of a one-three-one. As you know, obviously that's the the heart of his own defense. There, he's been a, a big key role in the defense for his team. Long range three, no good. Put back, no good. The rebound spills out. Looked like uh, Thomas Flynn may have drawn a foul there, but nothing called by the referees. So O'Carroll and College have the ball back with just under 30 seconds to go in this first quarter. Their crowd are trying to get behind them here, trying to urge them on to score before the end of this first quarter. No good. A good rebound there by Anderson. He's probably been the player of the game so far. 12 seconds to go. It's going to be Bantry with the last shot of this first quarter. See if they can extend their lead past six. We've got five seconds on the clock. 
They may not get it off in time. It looks like they're going to struggle. Long range three off the backboard and it's no good. So at the end of the first quarter, it's Kalash to Pubble, Bantry 11 and O'Carrollin College from Nobber 5. We'll be back after this quarter break. Welcome back here to the second quarter. So, Bantry lead 11 points to five. What are we going to be looking out for early on here, uh, Danny? Um, I think we'll, Bantry will be we'll look, looking to see if Bantry can start the game as well as they did in the first quarter. They obviously jumped out to an 8-0 there starting the first quarter, obviously within the first three or four minutes. So it'll be interesting to see if they can have another start to the quarter like they did earlier. Yeah, definitely. Killian Price was unlucky there. He got a good steal, but unfortunately he travelled as he tried to finish down the far end. Long range three, no good. Another offensive rebound again inside. And that's a lovely basket there by Liam Cotter. I think Cotter's doing an extremely good job on the uh, offensive rebound too. If you watch him even off the ball, he's doing a great job finding the position. So as soon as the shot goes up, he's in position to help his team out. Really yeah, good work. Definitely. And I think exactly as you said earlier on, Danny, one of the difficulties with this zone defense is that you just don't have individual responsibility. So... Oftentimes when you're playing a zone, you can see players looking at each other saying, who's supposed to be stopping him from getting the rebound? And that can be a difficulty. Yeah, the coach is happy about Carroll and College may need to have a look at that because obviously giving up 13 points uh, this early on in the game when they've only scored five themselves, something's not working. A deflected pass there inside and it's pushed down the court and a foul is drawn there. Good work by Shane Murray as he pushed the, the ball down the court. Again, good defense by Bantry. In that zone defense, their hands are up and they're trying to force difficult passes and uh, O'Carroll and College have found it difficult to be able to get the ball inside. Long range shot here, again off the backboard. A rebound, but a foul is called. Let's see who the foul is called. It's foul number four on O'Carroll and College. So one of the guards in there trying to help out his, uh, his teammates, Adam O'Neill, but he's a call for a foul on one of the big guys. Long range three here, off the backboard again. Good rebound there and pushed. Excellent work there by uh, Saren of Fionagoyne. He did a great job. He, he got the rebound and then pushed it coast to coast himself, drew the foul, and now he's going to head along to the free throw uh, line. He's earned a, a, his uh, two shots here, Danny. Yeah, and I think that's the best way, obviously, to beat. The, they're struggling in the offense. Um, we can see here now, obviously, at Carroll College. They're not really breaking down the defense. So the key for them is, obviously, when they get the defensive rebound, they need to push the ball, and they need to try and score the basketball before the team has a chance to set up and play defense against them. First one's good there by Sarah. And that again goes back to that issue that they're having is that they're not getting enough of those rebounds to allow themselves to do that Danny which is again making it even more difficult for themselves but that being said it's 13-7 and only a, a six point game so they're still right here right in the game if they can get steals it will certainly cause uh, problems Saron Gamble there that's and the, he's that's ahead that's the steal you were looking for <laughs> <laughs> a lovely a lovely clearance there is the best word I can say for it. And we have a timeout here. It's 13-7 with 6.24 to go in this second quarter.
Welcome back. It's as we said, 13-7, 6:22 to go in this first quarter. Our second quarter. Apologies. O'Carlin College have the ball. Saren of Fiona going push the ball into the corner. He reverses it up. A tough pass inside there, though. Killian Price tried to find uh, Patrick Mead under the basket, but that's exactly where the defense is. Long range three, and that's a huge shot from the outside. That was a really big shot there by Anderson, because I think in the last few minutes there, Bantry were kind of struggling to score the basketball. Um, and obviously, all that would do is give O'Carroll College confidence in their defense. But again, that long range shot there by John Anderson will make them rethink their options in again. Yeah, Anderson, who was had a blistering start, but then it had gone kind of quiet a little bit there. Nice move inside, and that's a really nice finish there for O'Carroll uh, College by Killian Markey inside. So great job there by Markey. And the score now is 16-9. Anderson again inside, no good. That's a brilliant rebound though. Excellent work there by Sean Brady, a really athletic. He just went up and plucked it out of the sky. More than likely a strong GA player himself. First one misses. Second one, no good either. And great job there by Sauron of Funagoyen again, drawing fouls. He certainly is going to be a little bit battered and bruised by the end of this game. Danny finds himself on the deck quite often. Yeah, I can see that. He's definitely the, the, the person who likes to throw himself around for his team. You know, a good lad. Though. That, I think that's what they need, especially at this stage in the game. Obviously, down by seven points. They're looking for a bit of fight. It's, you know, winning a loose ball or getting a touch, anything like that. That's going to be the difference here for him, and he definitely is the person for that. Oh, that's a lovely pass. Really unfortunate there. That they did great work there between uh, Killian Price and Patrick Mead with a fantastic uh, bounce pass, but unfortunately it didn't go in. And these are the couple of little looks when they do get in and around the basket like that. They just need these to drop in order to uh, keep the scoreboard ticking over, keep them in this game. Yeah, I think the O'Carroll College coach uh, will be definitely happy with the last few minutes. His team has had to work the ball inside, as you mentioned earlier, something they need to do. Unlucky there on that last finish, but before that, previously that, they did get a score. But I think he'll be uh, happy with the last couple of minutes have gone, even though his team are still losing. Anderson, no good there, and O'Carroll College have the ball back. Bantry have number seven, Liam Cotter, coming back into the game replacing Sean Brady, who is doing great work on the offensive rebounds there in particular. The Bantry crowd are shouting for defense, getting behind their team. Again, we have to look to see how are we gonna get the ball inside. Good passing, a little bit too close, probably tough to have kind of two or three passes all in the space of about two feet under the basket there. You want one of the guys to, to go up strong and try and draw some contact any. Yeah, I think on the last one there, it was they were so close, it was nearly like a handoff to yeah. each other. I think the coaching staff would be nearly just telling them somebody put it up. Because as you said, in some of these games, offensive rebounds can be just as important as passes. There's a great offensive rebound, a great block. And it just doesn't fall, but another offensive rebound. Reset back out, good move inside, no good. And the shots just aren't falling for O'Carroll and College. They're having lots of great opportunities, really working hard, but the ball just isn't going into the basket. Another great rebound by Saron of Yonagoyne. And O'Carroll and College push the ball back down. The trailer's there at the top. He did well to draw the foul there. I think of another split second, he might have been called for the travelling violation. But yeah, it was a, a close one, but... Again, he draws the foul and he heads the free throw line. So another chance for uh, Saron to add a couple of points here. First one's just long. He actually has pretty nice shooting uh, form from the free throw line here, Danny. So it might be something even as they move the ball around that he'll be able to look for mid-range shots as well. But neither goes in there for him. Yeah, he's definitely unlucky in those shots. Obviously, he kind of just went in and out, essentially. But he just needs to keep attacking the basket. They'll get their luck. 
That's again a, a lovely steal by uh, Killian Price, but it just doesn't go in for them. And at the moment, they have to be questioning his look on their side, especially when down the far end, Liam Cotter comes and gets an easy two underneath the basket. And at the moment, that's the difference between the teams is that uh, Bantry are taking those easier opportunities around the basket and they're just not going in for O'Carlin College. And that's a huge move there by Thomas Flynn. He got the steal, pushed the ball in transition, drew the contact and was able to finish through contact. Danny, that was a very impressive move. Yeah, exactly, Connor. And as you said, they obviously about finishing. Um, Bantry made two or three lovely plays there in the last couple of minutes. Obviously, to finish, put six points on the board. But on the other end, our Carlin College just can't seem to get the ball to drop in. Here you have Cotter again, stamping his authority on it, getting an offensive rebound. Long range three, no good. Henderson with the rebound, but he loses possession. But we kind of noticed there for a couple of minutes that it was really O'Carlin College, as you said, were, were kind of coming into the ascendancy. Momentum was kind of shifting towards them, but they just weren't able to capitalize uh, on it as they're getting those opportunities. And now the lead is stretched back out to 11 from the good work from Bantry here. Long range three, it's no good off the backboard. And again, that's a shot from a couple of feet outside the three-point line they need to try and even if it's not falling inside they need to keep trying to get shots around the basket again the ball's moved another nice pass inside and a lovely finish lovely work inside Liam Cotter working off the wonderful pass from Thomas Flynn and Thomas Flynn has really come into the game in the last couple of minutes uh, Danny with some Beautiful scores and there, another lovely assist. Yeah, Connor, that's, that, that was lovely basketball there by Bantry, really was. Obviously, they drove in, drew the help. Um, I felt Cotter just got himself in position to be there, pick up the assist and put the ball in the basket. But a really good offensive work there by Flynn. And that's been the difference really so far is that the Bantry players, when they put the ball on the floor, they're able to see slightly more passes than... Oh, that's a lovely move inside by Anderson. He drives baseline and goes up and finishes on the other side. And they've extended the lead out now to a 15-point game with 1.35 left to go in this first half. And you can kind of see the heads dropping a little bit from uh, O'Carlin College. But again, O'Funagoyne does well, drives hard to the basket, draws a foul, and he's going to head to the free throw line. So these are two big free throws for one of the joint captains for O'Carlin College as he tries to get his team up into double digits and keep the scoreboard ticking over. As you said, they're currently down by 15 points, but if they can keep plucking away one or two points here and there, give themselves a, a chance in the second half. Yeah, you, you don't want to be going into the second half kind of lo looking at a 20-point deficit, essentially. Obviously, they're currently at 15 points, though. I think this minute, 29 seconds. O'Carlin College really need to put their stamp on it. They really need to be the team, you know, that finishes this half the stronger and put themselves in a position obviously to have a better second half and oh, a foul call by the referee it looked like it could have been a steal there by um, Matthew Barry but a foul was called and because um, Clash the Pubble Vantry are in team fouls so in each quarter you have four team fouls and any foul above that limit it's two free throws every time they you foul so um, Nobber are going to head to the free throw line here through Killian Price. The first one's no good for Killian, unfortunately. And the second one's really good there by Killian Price as he gets his team up into double digits. And it's now 24 to 10 with just over one minute to go in this uh, first half. So a big stop here is required from O'Carlin College. If they can get a stop and then maybe get a score, it gives them a bit more momentum. The miss is there, Killian Price again with the rebound. He has his head up, looks for a pass. He finds one of his teammates. Back out to Price, who's gonna shoot from the outside. Just doesn't fall, but the rebound comes to Killian Markey. Ball goes inside, back to Markey, who goes to basket. Looks like he could have been fouled, but no, nothing called. Tough pass inside, back again, no good, and a foul this time. So, again, they're finding themselves opportunities around the basket, but just haven't been able to finish. Yeah, I think O'Carroll College are doing a really, really good job, obviously, of creating those opportunities to score. 
Um, one thing, look, this is under 19C basketball, but if you look at the fundamentals of the game, they're, both teams are doing a really good job passing the ball inside, back outside, some of their movement, creating those shot opportunities. I think if O'Carroll College want to have a bit of success in this game, they'll probably need to just capitalise on those chances. They need to start putting those away. Fellas need to be a bit more composed. Also, when they find themselves at the free throw line, they're missing a lot of free throws. Yeah. And as you know yourself, Connor, like it, it's hard work to get to the free throw line. That's when you really got to punish the team. It, it goes again to this point that when when you play in school gyms around the country, they're they're quite different baskets than uh, playing in these rims in the arena. And you're not used to playing where there's seats behind the basket or anything else. Killian Price again, up off the backboard, no good. They get the ball back, no good. It's now pushed down the court. Layup. Oh, a big block. That was excellent <laughs> defense there. Yeah, excellent a really good defense. defense. He did a great job not to foul. We have 11 seconds to go in this first quarter. Kalashta Pobo Bantry have the ball. A 14 point lead here. As a sub comes in, Shane Murray comes into the game for Liam Cotter here for the last 11.4 seconds. Ball goes out to Thomas Flynn. Flynn puts the ball on the ground. He reverses it up, long range shot, and it's good. That's a huge shot before the end of this first half. A huge shot for Bantry gives them now a 27 points to 10 lead at the end of the first half. And Kalash, the Pobo Bantry have a huge lead over O'Carroll College. You have all the work to do to get back into this in the second half. We'll be back after halftime.
Welcome back to the, the second half here as Bantry have a 17 point lead over Nubber. Long range three here, no good, and a good rebound inside. By number 10 there, Kevin Clifford. One of the things, Danny, is that Bantry have probably had a bigger spread of people making a, an influence on the game. They've had scores from a number of different people. Obviously, Anderson uh, led the way. But it, oh, that's a lovely pass. Lots of guys uh, contributing in different ways. Yeah, I think, and that's why probably why they are leading by this 17 points. Um, everybody really is playing their, playing a good game from out there today. And the other side, obviously, you're are kind of very reliant on one or two players. Um, in particular, obviously, he's coming back to the subs, Ben Cherno, obviously, Saran. Obviously, he was hurt at the start. He seems to be one of the main offensive players, and also number nine, Kenny yeah. Markey. When you look at Bantry, like, they're getting the scores from a lot of different places. Um, you know, that's it, why they have 27 points, and yet he might supposed to have 10 at this stage in the yeah, game. Yeah, definitely. Markey has five of the 10 points so far, and that's a huge three from the outside, banked in. Just as you were saying, his name, Killian Markey, steps up and hits a huge three, which will give them confidence now. The crowd again, as you said, uh, Danny, any time that they're given an opportunity to sh shout, they're going to shout. So they're getting loud here, and they're just encouraging their team to kind of keep plucking away, give themselves an opportunity. That was excellent offense, but even equally as good defense there by um, O'Carrollin. And an inside-outside pass found him wide open under the basket. Yeah. Well, obviously the man of the moment there, John Anderson, comes up and blocks the shot for Bantry. Yeah, Patrick Mead did a good job. Tough shot inside, again, good defense by Anderson, who pushes the ball down the floor. He's going to attack. He <laughs> puts it up off the backboard and goes and gets his own rebound. T-Mac in the All-Star game uh, comes to mind, Danny. Yeah, we didn't know there if that was part of the play, is if he threw it up to go and get it, or did he actually throw it up attempt to score? I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he decided to just throw it up off the backboard, get himself to the basket. Yeah, I think at halftime, Anderson found out that he had more than 10 points, so now he's chasing the 10 rebounds to complete that double-double. <laughs> First free throw is good for him there. Second one, no good. Good rebound there by Sauron, who I think got a little clip to the side of the head there. But again, he continues on. Another long-range shot, no good. Good rebound inside, but just too much on it there by Patrick Mead, who did a good job getting the rebound, but he just was a little too far underneath the basket. Now a long-range three from Barry, no good. Shane Murray with a two, no good. A little bit more patience here. Anderson with a nice pass inside and a good rebound there again by Saron of Fionagain, who must have about 12 or 13 rebounds himself so far. Yeah, he's done a really good job on the defensive end for his team. Um, just unfortunately, just on the offensive end there, they can't seem to find the basket. Still though, I'm still quite happy the way that they are moving the basketball, you know. Yeah, that's we, a we perfect about, offense um, there. We talk about players being selfish. I think at this stage, O'Carroll needs somebody to kind of be selfish to put the ball in from. Yeah, that was a lovely offense and a two-point there. And we've got a timeout here. It's 28-15 with 5.31 to go in this third quarter.
Welcome back, and the you O'Carroll know, College fans are getting behind their team again, encouraging them here on defense. They had a beautiful offense there the last time. A great rebound inside there again by that man, Sarno Fiona going. So as you said, Danny, they're moving the ball well, much better against this zone now. They, they've done a good job. They're finding it in the high post. And then when the defense collapses, they're looking for those guys underneath the basket. So if they can knock down a couple of layups, they might get, have a chance to get themselves back in the game. But it has to be said that uh, you have to credit their coach, Irwin, there on, uh, on the bench, that he's obviously set them up quite well. And tactically, they're doing a lot of the right stuff. It's just executing them is, is going to be the thing that's going to decide this game, really. Yeah, because it's an awkward position to be in as a coach because look, you give up 28 points. It's not a massive amount um, as a three-point that goes in from Bantry. The commentator's curse. Yeah, a huge, to 31. A, a huge shot there by uh, Matthew Barry. So right as O'Carroll and College are trying to force their way back into this game, it's a huge shot. And a foul there drawn by Patrick Mead, one of the co-captains on the floor for O'Carroll and College. But that's the, th that's the difference really, it's when you have the momentum, you have to be able to take your layups and different things so that when these runs come against you, that. <laughs> nice job inside there by O'Carroll and College. A lovely layup inside by Aaron Tolan, who did a good job with the offensive rebound and scores now 31-17. Two no good there. Mead with the rebound. It's good to see though Carolyn College actually controlling their own defensive rebounds here now in the second half. They're limiting the amount of chances that they're giving up, you know, which you can see that that's evident in the score. And now it's two free throws to come here again as Ophionagoin draws the foul. Anytime he's been really aggressive getting to the basket, he's done a good job drawing uh, fouls and getting himself to the free throw line. So. He's been unfortunate with a couple of the free throws, so let's see if he's able to knock them down this end. First one is good. <laughs> he, di he didn't quite believe that it was going to go in, so he looked like it wasn't going to work out for him, but it does. It drops. And the second one's no good, unfortunately. But it's a 13-point game here with just under four minutes to go in this third quarter, so... It's still all to play for. O'Carroll and College still in the game. They just need a couple of baskets. It's amazing how quickly fortunes can change in basketball, Danny, when things start going your way. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, they went in 17 down at the half. Um, they had it back to 13. They were just brought that basket. But again, I think the coach might have pointed out at half time. Maybe he just drew up on the coaching board, just exactly showing the opportunities that were there and the gaps that were in the defence. Unfortunately, there it doesn't go in, but... Danny, for, for people who don't watch basketball maybe as much, it's really a huge impact that is possible during the game for coaches because they're able to take timeouts and different things that you're not quite able to do in other sports. So you're able to impact tactically a lot a lot more directly. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, like uh, most coaches would go around with a coaching board, um, a marker, you know, and they'd be able to call timeouts. You get two timeouts in the first half, three in the second, as well as a halftime interval to actually sit down for a few moments and draw up, show what the defence are doing. And from the sideline, sometimes you can see the game a bit differently. Maybe the coach has observed that maybe there is a gap here, there is a gap there, and just set the guys up to exploit those gaps. One of the challenging things that seems to be happening to O'Carroll and College is just the angle that they're getting to the basket. They're coming along the baseline, and it's quite difficult to use the backboard in those uh, situations for layups because you just don't have a really clean angle at it. You you really want to come at it kind of from about a 45 degree angle, but they're trying to use the backboard. And the other part of it is that these kind of glass backboards here in the arena are very different than most of the school's uh, baskets that they play in. Uh, Danny, they're a lot kind of bouncier, and the ball comes off them a, a little bit quicker than than they would in other places. Yeah, exactly. I think somebody just the lads need to probably be a bit more better composed when they do get the ball in there. And you can see how Carroll and College obviously. When they miss a shot, the hands are kind of going in the head, the hands are going there. You can see some of the lads are getting a bit frustrated because, you know what, Connor, as you said, it, they're probably in their school gyms, they're probably making these shots. Yeah. And it's just because here now in the arena playing the different, uh, the arena, different basket, different backboard, the glass, everything, is just having its toll on the guys. They just need to kind of, I think, stay composed, keep working inside. Definitely. You know, and just, you know, we're three quarters into the game now, eventually they will get used to it. That was the thing in the, in the game previous to this. It was a 20-point game for a large part of it, and it was only with the last 
kind of four or five minutes of the game that uh, one of the teams hit three three-pointers and all of a sudden they got the ball, uh, the game back to four points with only uh, about a minute and 45 seconds to go. So you want to keep positive and they just got a lovely score there by Adam O'Neill and they're the sort of things that they're going to need to keep getting if they're going to fight their way back into this game. Yeah, there's two minutes and 10 seconds now remaining in the third quarter. So I think what O'Carroll College need to do is they're trying to need to look, it's 13 point game. If they can win these next two minutes, even win it by, you know, four or five points, get back to single digits, and then go into the hopefully the last quarter, eight minutes, with down eight points, it could be anybody's game then. The two co-captains there working really well together, trying to lead their team back into the game. It was a, a Fiona going found Mead underneath the basket. Mead gets fouled, heads to the free throw line for two shots here. First one, no good. Second one doesn't go in, but a good offensive rebound. It looked like he might have drawn a foul, but nothing works there for Fiona Gain, who puts his head down, but he needs to get back on defense here. But it's an air ball there. So O'Carrollin College are back in possession. They move the ball over to the right hand wing, back up to the top with Ophiona going. Long range three pointer, and it's good! That's a big shot there for O'Carrollin College through Killian Markey, who's been one of the top players for them, Danny. He's really carried the offense at times here, hitting some big shots. Yeah, I think that's his third three pointer the afternoon there, you know. And if you notice, Markey will always try and find himself around that right wing, someone that maybe he's familiar with. And like, he kind of waits for the ball to come to him. And once he gets it, releases a good shot. Good score there. Unfortunately, excitement got the better of them there. And it's a timeout here. So we'll be back in one minute. There's one minute, 23 seconds to go in this third quarter. Welcome back. So one minute 20 to go here in this third quarter and we're at a pivotal stage in the game. Anderson with a huge basket, so that's a huge response. O'Carrollin College had gotten the lead back to just 10, but now they give up a basket, so it's back out to 12, a minute to go here. They're doing really well though. And again, they just can't finish inside, but they've done a really good job consistently getting the ball to the high post then and then then down underneath the basket. No good from the outside. Yeah, I think your Carolyn College, I think their coach will be a bit frustrated um, because obviously he can't physically go out there and put the ball in the basket. He's obviously drawing up stuff and he's putting things in motion to get the ball in places they can score. Just unfortunately, the shots aren't dropping. Yeah, it's the sort of thing that the guys are probably going to watch back some of this and they're going to be a bit frustrated with some of the shots but that's the way cup finals uh, or league finals can often go long range three no good rebound there by O'Carlin College they have the ball back nine seconds left in the clock it's a 12 point game they need a big score here to finish out the third quarter long range shot by Markey and he's fouled He's fouled from the tr behind the three-point line, shooting a three-pointer. So he has three free throws here to come. 
So Killian Markey heads the free throw line. If he can nail these three free throws, it will be a single digit game. They're currently down 12, so the, here's three big shots for Markey. I think these will be huge here now, Colin, because obviously going into this quarter, they're down 17 points. And yep. If First Markey can make these, you know, that puts them to nine points. That's an eight, that's an eight point win in this, in this quarter alone. Second one, no good. You could see there, Danny, he had shot he had shot the ball and he was already walking away from the free throw line. Not the way you want to do it. You want to finish your shot out. Third one is good. So two out of three is not bad. And the lead is just 10 points now as the third quarter ends. So great job there by O'Carroll College to get the lead to back to 10. Their crowd are behind them and they have a shot here to try and get this game back close in the fourth quarter. We'll be back in one minute. So welcome back to this fourth quarter. As you can hear, both sets of crowd, uh, both sets of fans are getting right behind their teams. Both sets of students are doing a fantastic job. They're credit to their schools here today, Danny. They're really giving this uh, game a great atmosphere. Yeah, exactly. And it's interesting. Obviously, eight minutes of basketball, and for the first time all game, both sets of fans are on their feet. So it's really, really good to see. And hopefully, look, that's what the players need. Some of these guys there, okay, have. Had a tough three quarters, probably getting tired. That extra lift from their fans and their schoolmates is what they need to get them through. Nice block by Mead. And it's O'Carroll and College ball, fist bumps all round. This is a big, big opportunity now for them. If they're able to get one or two baskets here, get the lead down to six or seven points, it can start becoming a little bit concerning for our Bantry here. They need to move the ball a little bit better than that, but a foul is called and that's actually a quite interesting foul there now Connor because the foul goes on um, number 5 obviously uh, one of the main players John Anderson that's actually his fourth personal foul so if he was to complete another foul he'd actually obviously have to go sit in the bench for the remainder of the game not what Bantry want to see so he's going to need to try and stay in the game and not foul and there we go that's a huge call there an offensive foul so that is the fifth foul for John Anderson. So exactly as Danny was saying, the foul down the far end, a cheap reach-in foul, which was his fourth foul, really put Anderson into danger. And then on the break, he pushed the ball and was called for an offensive foul. The defender got there in time, so a charging foul. So that's Anderson gone for this last seven minutes of this fourth quarter. So. We'll see if O'Carlin College can make them pay here. They're down by 10 still, but they have an opportunity. A big basket here, long range three. No good off the backboard and a good rebound there by Matthew Barry, who himself has been very good. I think now for Bantry, it's an opportunity for somebody else to step up. Just rims out, another great rebound by, by O'Funagoyne. He moves the ball well. They're looking to find a teammate. It goes inside and deflected out. But the clock, there's still plenty of time with six and a half minutes of basketball. But the clock is not going to be uh, O'Carroll College's friend if uh, if they kind of go through another minute or two here without getting the score, uh, Danny. Yeah, exactly. I think for O'Carroll College, you probably need to get the ball back in the hands of um, Killian Markey. Obviously, as I said, he has 11 point or 13 points so far in the game with three three-pointers. 
they're still in the zone defence there's plenty of space for that outside shot I think if I was the coach of O'Carroll College I'd want Killian Markey taking the next couple of shots a good defence there by O'Carroll College they get a stop and again unfortunately they turn the ball over so they're going to need to be able to settle down a little bit and we have a timeout here on the floor with six minutes to go. It's still a 10 point game. Welcome back for this final six minutes. So we have a big kind of next score is going to be huge for either team. It's either going to be pushed out to a 12 point game or it could be back into single digits. Nice move there by Bantry out of the timeout. They get a good look under the basket, but it's no good. Balls reverse back out. Huge shot here, no good. A great rebound inside. And a huge score there by Liam Cotter. So a huge offensive rebound and a big basket there by Cotter as he extends his team's lead to 12 points. I think O'Carroll College coach won't be too happy with that there. Giving way too many opportunities, you know, again at the basket. They need to do a better job boxing out. Need to dig in for this last five and a half minutes now. He'll be happier with Meade's long range two there, but they get a stop, so... Although they gave up a basket, they've responded pretty quickly. And unfortunately, another turnover there by O'Carroll College. Of Fiona going, almost goes through one of the signs at the side of the court, but they need to get another stop. They're getting good, st a travel is called there. So O'Carroll College again, they're getting opportunities here but they have to really make a pay if, if they're going to get back into this game. And I think, as you said earlier on, Danny, number nine, Killian Markey's the man for, the, uh, for them today. He's got 13 points today so far, top score. So they need to find a way to get him a good opportunity. Yeah, and just one thing as well to note there, Connor. Um, uh, Bantry at the moment actually have no timeouts left. So if um, O'Carroll College were to put a bit of run on it, obviously the coach isn't able to get the lads out to, you know, re-engage or anything. So it's very much on them. That will help their case though again as Liam Cotter steps up with another big basket. So come at the hour, come at the man as they say. So Liam Cotter, two big baskets now. When they need to be settled down a little bit, he's been the man who's got the offensive rebounds and the baskets inside. A foul there by Shane Murray. The sub is coming in, so we have Sean Brady checking back into the game for Matthew Barry. Matthew Barry, of course, is the top scorer for uh, Clash of Pulver Bantry so far with 10 points. Good work there by Thomas Flynn to deflect the pass. It really has been a balanced effort by Bantry. Lots of guys stepping up and making plays. Yeah, exactly. They're, you're de they're definitely a really good team. You know, There's no real one man on the team or anything. It's a big opportunity here. And a foul is called. And O'Carroll and College are heading to the free throw line here. Two free throws to come. So Killian Markey heads to the free throw line. I think at this time now it's kind of a, 
they really need to go for it now before it's too late. We're just 3.54 remaining in the game, you know. If it goes under kind of a two minute mark, two and a half, three minute mark, it's a bit too late, you know. This is the time really they need to start going for it. And unfortunately, neither of those free throws are good for the guys from Nobber. So it's a 12 point game with just under four minutes to go. This will be, Bantry are using up plenty of the clock here. The clock is their friend. So a long range three, no good, but an offensive rebound. The shot doesn't go up, but yet again, another offensive rebound. And here's where it's a killer, Danny. And two offensive rebounds, and all of a sudden, they're going to be playing offense for almost a minute here without uh, O'Carroll College touching the ball. Yeah, for anyone who obviously is unaware of the ruling, it's um, you have 24 seconds to shoot the ball. And if you shoot the ball within those 24 seconds, and you happen to get an offensive rebound, it resets back out to 14 seconds. So that's kind of said, and that opportunity there, they've actually had nearly close to a minute of the basketball which is not what O'Carroll College wanted to be doing. Long range three, no good off the backboard there. The ball spills. Of Fiona going again with a... He dives on the ball. Gets himself fouled. And again, because Kalash, the Pobo Bantry are in team fouls, it means that uh, Fiona going is heading to the free throw line. So another two free throws here. An opportunity to get it back to the 10 point mark if he can knock them down. First one short. Unfortunately, free throws have been a challenge for O'Carroll College today. They shot about probably 4 or 12. That one's good. And Danny, it's in games like this in, in tight finals where they're down by 11 points and they've probably left a few points behind both in, in layups and in free throws that they're going to be kicking themselves over. Yeah, definitely. I'm not too sure if they will, but if any of these lads were to watch back this game um, afterwards or in the coming weeks, definitely I think they would be looking at the amount of free throw they've missed. Like for these lads in O'Carroll and College, they're probably playing club basketball above in Mead. They're obviously playing school basketball. They're probably knocking down free throws at a high percentage week in, week out. Then it's unfortunate on the big stage today, the shots didn't drop. Yeah, it can be a lonely place on the free throw line in the in the National Basketball Arena, particularly when there's a crowd there that it's slightly different at times for people mentally, so you have to be able to just kind of shoot the free throw in the same way that you shoot it every other time, but it's still an 11-point game. Bantry are still playing very well overall, doing a great job. Their crowd are on their feet, saying, let's go, Bantry. It's going to make the long drive back to... Cork that bit easier if they can close out this game they currently lead by 11, a steal there by O'Carroll College pull up shot no good rebound and a foul is drawn so we have Patrick Mead one of the co-captains heading up to the free throw line he's going to have his opportunity to take two here I have to say, Danny, like Sarah and Fiona going, some of the shots may not have fallen for him, but it's not from a lack of effort. He's been all over the floor today, putting in a huge amount of effort. Yeah, no, correct. He has that, that number 13 white jersey has been absolutely everywhere. Um, obviously, at the start of the game, he went down, clinching his hand. We thought he might have been injured. But no, he came back and, you know, he was as strong as ever on the offensive rebound, the defensive rebound, getting himself to the line. He did, in fairness, he had a really good game today. Yeah, himself and Killian Markey in particular have been excellent for O'Carroll College. Sorry, sorry, Killian Price. Long three, no good. Good rebound there, and it looks like a little bit of an unfortunate injury there. Uh, the player looked like he got his leg caught under uh, looked like he may have gotten his leg caught under one of his opponents so we'll see now again there is first aid support there so we have one of the physios for a number of the Irish teams here and 
I think her presence helped him just <laughs> jump up off the ground straight yeah, away. Yeah, she, she didn't even have to get out the holy water and he <laughs> sprung right up. I think he knows if he didn't get up, he can't walk up to collect his medal, so. Yeah. So, 1.34 to go in this fourth quarter. Clash to Pubble Bantry are inching closer to lifting this under 19C Boys Schools League title. Of course, it's a huge achievement to be able to even get up to this game in the arena. Lots of rounds to get through before this, but both teams have applied themselves really well. Here comes a fast break, good passing, and a travel is called by the referee. So the Bantry fans <laughs> want to just have that a couple of moments where they're able to cheer really well for their uh, team, but it's just each time a whistle comes just to halt it a little bit, but it looks like we're not that far away from them having the biggest cheer of the day as they're likely going to lift this under 19 C league title. They currently lead by 11 points. Good patience by O'Carrollin College. Fiona going with the shot off the backboard, buries his head, goes up for a two again, no good. Again, O'Carrollin College just haven't been able to hit those shots and they head back to the free throw line again. So those shots around the basket, they've had so many opportunities. Great work by Fiona going and Patrick Mead inside in particular, battling away, but it has to be said at the same time that the the, uh, the Bantry defense are standing up strong. Danny not giving them wide open layups, making them shoot over them, and that's really what you want with your defense. Yeah, exactly. Look, to give up 28 points in this under 19 C final is a credit to the Bantry defense. Um, they didn't give up many second opportunities. I know obviously the last possession there there was quite a few, but they really kind of they did what you need to do. They controlled their defensive glass. Um, if they did give it up, they didn't fold. They didn't put them on the free throw line as much as they would wanted. So really good. I think the coach and staff of Bantry will be quite happy with how his team played today. Yeah. So there's a sub there as Daniel O'Sullivan checks into the game for Liam Cotter, who had fouled out as well. So it's one of those things. You have five fouls, Danny, so you might as well use them. Yeah, I don't think um, Liam Cotter was going to take that foul back to Bantry. Liam. It's not. It's worth nothing down there. So it's a ten-point game with 40 seconds to go. You hear the fans chanting, oh, we love you, Bantry, we do. Who doesn't love Bantry, Danny? You're down in a lovely part of the country. I understand it's outside of Dublin, but that's about as far as my geography will take me. Now, obviously, me growing up in Cork, I remember playing against Bantry years ago, and um, obviously Bantry had a big club years ago. And then over the last couple of years, um, the basketball probably wasn't a big thing. GA would have probably with the Bantry Blues below, but this is a this is a big win for the school, you know, really big, obviously, to show that they're competing at basketball now again. 19 seconds to go here. It's a, a, a seven-point game, I think. The scoreboard in the arena is still saying a 10-point game. Yeah, they've just caught up with us. So a seven-point game. Barring a miracle here, it looks like Bantry are going to be taking the under 19 C uh, schools title back with them to Cork and again there's a lot of good work going on down in County Cork with the local sports partnership and development officer Kieran O'Sullivan down there doing uh, a lot of work outside of the traditional strongholds of uh, basketball uh, Danny. Yeah I know definitely I think uh, obviously when Kieran got involved there um, he was one of the, the main driving forces that got Bantry back into competitive Cork basketball um, and as you said, obviously you weren't too familiar where it is. It's probably a good hour and a half drive from the Prokel Hall, you know, so oh, yeah. they have a good journey ahead of Bantry week in, week out, and in fairness to the kids and their parents, they do it. But that is it, and congratulations to Kloshta Pubbel Bantry, who are the under-19 C Boys League winners. Commiserations to O'Carrollin College, who put together a fantastic performance overall only lost by seven points and when they reflect on it they had lots of opportunities but just they weren't able to fall on the day and that's a credit to the guys in Bantry so congratulations to Bantry commiserations to O'Carrollin College and thank you everybody for joining us on today's stream